Good morning, grade 5. Welcome back to grade 5 mathematics class. How are you all doing today? So we have come to the end of the chapter, chapter 11. Now we'll see the questions from revision station page, which is page number 177. So all of you please turn to page number 177 in your textbook. Let's see the questions. The first one, complete the following table. So let's first discuss the questions and then move on to answering them. So the first one, here we have the starting time or date and here we have the finishing time or date and here we have the column for duration. So the first question, the starting time is 12.15 p.m. and the finishing time is 3.20 p.m. and you have to find out the duration. How do we find out the duration? You can subtract the starting time from the finishing time then you will get the duration but keep in mind that when you borrow one hour from the hours column and give it to the minutes column you are actually giving one hour or 60 minutes to the minutes column and keep that in mind when you do the subtraction and the next question we don't have the starting time but we have the finishing time and the actual duration is given so the finishing time and the duration is given and to find out the starting time how do we do the calculation you have to count four hours ten minutes backwards from 5 30 a.m and the third one 12th september the starting date is given and the finishing date is given as 31st october and you have to find the duration between these two months so for this remember how many days are there in each month of the year you can just think of the rhyme 30 days as september april june and november and february has 28 days except in leap years in which it has 29 days so just keep that in mind and it will be easy for you to find out how many days are there in each month of an year so to find out the duration first think of how many days are there in september there are 30 days in the month of september so to find out how many days are there from 12th of september to the 30th of september how do we do just subtract 30 minus 12 which is equal to 18 but since 12th September should also be included the number of days from 12th September to 30th September will be a total of 19 days and 31st October is the ending date or finishing date which means the whole of October has to be considered so in October you have 31 days in total so the total duration will be this 19 days plus 31 days which you can calculate now the next one question d you don't have the starting date but you have the finishing date as 8th january and the duration is given as 40 days now how do you find out the starting date see you have to count 40 days backwards from the 8th of january so 8th of January means you have to consider the first 8 days of the month of January. Then the previous month, you are counting backwards, right? The previous month is December and December has a total of 31 days. So the 31 days of December plus the first 8 days of January means it is a total of 39 days. But here the duration is 40 days. So you have to consider the one day previous to the 1st of December, which is the 30th of November. So, here the starting date would be the 30th of November. Now, the next one, 8.30 a.m., the starting time, the finishing time is not given, but the duration is given as 2 hours 20 minutes. So, here you have to add 2 hours 20 minutes to 8.30 a.m., then you'll get the finishing time. Now, question F, 21st March, but the finishing date is not given and 32 days is given as the duration. So March has a total of 31 days and you are considering from 21st of March only including the 21st of March. So from 21st of March to the 31st of March including this date how many days are there? There are a total of 11 days and the duration is given as 32 days. So 32 minus 11 would be how much it is 21 which means the first 21 days of the month of april so what would be the finishing date the finishing date here would be 21st of april 
Now the last one, 1st November and 20th December. And you have to find out the duration. For that, you have to know how many total days are there in month of November. So November has got a total of 30 days. So from 1st of November, there are 30 days of the month plus the first 20 days of December. That is 30 plus 20. And you will get the duration of this time period. So children, I hope you are clear with these questions. We will see the next one. Convert 148 minutes into hours and minutes. So we know 60 minutes is equal to 1 hour. So 148 minutes will be equal to 148 divided by 60. So 140 divided by 60 gives you 2 full hours and you have 28 minutes extra. So the equivalent in terms of hours and minutes is equal to 2 hours 28 minutes. So we'll see the next one. Convert 78 seconds into minutes and seconds. So we know 60 seconds equals 1 minute. So 78 seconds will be equal to 78 divided by 60. And that is equal to, see, when you divide 78 seconds by 60 seconds, you get 1 minute plus 18 seconds extra or remaining. So the equivalent is 1 minute 18 seconds. Now, the fourth question. Tick the correct statement and cross out the wrong statement. So let's see the statements. Question A. Cricket coaching at 3 a.m. It may not be a correct statement. So let's put a cross over there. Now question B is breakfast at 8.30 a.m. So that statement could be true. So let's put a tick there. Now C. Dinner at 9 a.m. We eat dinner at night. So dinner at 9 a.m. should be a wrong statement. Now snacks break in school at 10.30 p.m. So in schools, generally the school time will be during daytime. So snacks break in school at 10.30 p.m. could be a wrong statement. So let's put a cross here. So here from among these statements, the correct statement is breakfast at 8.30 a.m. Let's move on to question number 5. Ria takes 45 minutes to reach school. If her school starts at 9 a.m., then at what time should she leave from home? So let's see the steps. See, we are given the time in which the school starts. The school starts at 9 a.m. And the time to reach school, the time Ria takes to reach school is equal to 45 minutes. And the time she should start from home will be 45 minutes before 9 a.m. So what do you have to do? You will have to subtract 45 minutes from 9 a.m. So let's do the subtraction in the working column. And here we have written the time in proper columns. So 9 from 9 hours. So 9 is written in the hours column and 45 minutes. That should be written in the minutes column. Now we are going to subtract 45 minutes from 9. See, here we don't have anything to subtract from. So what do you do? You are going to borrow 1 hour from the hours column. So this will become 8 and you are giving 1 hour to the minutes column. So 1 hour is equal to 60 minutes. So here now we have 60 minutes. So from 60 minutes we are subtracting 45 minutes which is equal to 15 minutes. So 60 minus 45 is equal to 15. So now we have 15 minutes in the minutes column. Uh, in the hour column we have 8 hours. So at what time should she start from home? She should start from home at 8.15 a.m. That is 45 minutes before 9 a.m. the starting time at school. So I hope you are clear with this. Now the next one. Anjali was born on 18th April. How old will she be on 30th November of the same year? So we have to find out the number of days from the 18th of April to the 30th of November the same year. So for that we need to know how many days are there in each month between April and November. So April has got a total number of days equal to 30 and how many days are there from 18th April to 30th April including this 18th of April there are 30 minus 18 plus 1. This plus 1 is this 18th of April. So 30 minus 18 is equal to 12 and 12 plus 1 is equal to 13. 
there are 13 days from the 18th of April to the 30th of April including this date then which is the next month April then May in May there are 31 days then June in June there are 30 days July there are 31 days August there are 31 days then September there are 30 days then October October has also 31 days then November 30th of November that is the last day of the month of November so here how many days have to be considered 30 days we have to add these many days to get the total number of days between 18th of April and the 13th of the, sorry the 30th of November including both days so you can do that yourself now the next question a TV program runs from 7 30 p.m. to 8 22 p.m. if the commercial advertisement is for 18 minutes then what is the actual duration of the program so let's see the steps the starting time of the program is 7 30 p.m. whereas the ending time is 8 22 p.m. and there will be commercial advertisements in between which account to a total of 18 minutes so the duration of the program from 7.30 pm to 8.22 pm how do we find it out we have to subtract the starting time from the ending time that is 8.22 pm minus 7.30 pm so the duration of the program is 8.22 minus 7.30 so we are, here we have 8 in the hours column 22 in the minutes column and 7 in the hours column and 30 in the minutes column so here we have to subtract 30 minutes from 22 minutes which is not possible so we have to borrow one hour from the hours column so when you borrow one hour you are actually borrowing 60 minutes so borrowing one hour from the hours column giving it to the minutes column here we have one hour or 60 minutes plus the 22 minutes which are already here so 60 minutes plus 22 minutes is equal to a total of 82 minutes so from this 82 minutes we have to subtract this 30 minutes so from 82 minutes you subtract 30 minutes and you get 52 minutes and here in the hours column you have 7 hour minus 7 hour which is equal to 0 so the duration of the program is equal to 52 minutes but the actual duration will be the duration minus the duration of commercial break so that will be equal to 52 minutes minus 18 minutes so how do we do that subtraction see 52 minutes minus 18 minutes can be written like this in the working column let's do the calculation so 52 minus 18 here 4 here 12 12 minus 8 is equal to 4 4 minus 1 is equal to 3 and here 0 so that is equal to 34 minutes so the actual duration of the program is equal to 34 minutes so I hope you are clear with this question now let's see the next one how much time has elapsed between 11 20 a.m. and 11 10 p.m. so we have learned about the clock and on a clock a 12 hour clock we'll have the numbers from 1 to 12 written on it so 12 1 2 8 here 10 here see between 12 in the midnight and 12 in the noon how many hours are there 12 hours are there between 1 a.m. and between 1 p.m. the clock will go one full rotation and there will be 12 hours so between 2 a.m. and 2 p.m. there will be 12 hours so similarly between 11 20 a.m. and 11 20 p.m. there will be a total of 12 hours but here the time given is 11 20 a.m. and 11 10 p.m. which is 10 minutes less than 11 20 p.m. so that will be 10 minutes less than 12 hours right so 10 minutes less than 12 hours will be equal to 
11 hours and 50 minutes. So what is the duration or what or how much time has elapsed between 11.20 a.m. and 11.10 p.m.? There will be 11 hours and 50 minutes. So I hope you understood this question. Now let's see the next one. Convert the following temperatures into Fahrenheit scale. The first one, 120 degrees Celsius. So we know to convert from degree Celsius into Fahrenheit scale, what is the formula? So degree Fahrenheit is equal to degree Celsius into 9 by 5 plus 32. So the temperature here, the first question, 120 degree Celsius. So substituting it here, 120 into 9 by 5 plus 32. So cancelling out the common factors, 120 divided by 5 is equal to 24. 5 divided by 5 equals 1. So this is equal to this part is equal to 24 into 9 plus 32 and 24 into 9 equals 216 plus 32 is equal to 248 degree Fahrenheit. So that is the equivalent temperature of 120 degree Celsius in the Fahrenheit scale 248 degree Fahrenheit. So the rest of the questions from this one we can do yourself in your notebook. Now the next one question number 10 convert the following temperatures into Celsius scale. The first one 248 degree Fahrenheit. So to convert from Fahrenheit into Celsius what is the formula? Degree Celsius is equal to degree Fahrenheit minus 32 into 5 by 9. So the temperature in Fahrenheit here is 248 degree Fahrenheit. So substituting that here we have 248 minus 32 the whole thing into 5 by 9. So we always do the calculations given within the brackets first. So 248 minus 32 is equal to 216 into this 5 by 9. So that is equal to, see after cancelling out the common factors, 216 divided by 9 is equal to 24 and 9 divided by 9 is equal to 1. Or you can just directly divide 216 by 9 and then to the multiplication. So it's 24 into 5 which is equal to 120 degrees Celsius. So 248 degree Fahrenheit is equal to 120 degree Celsius. So the rest of the conversions you can do yourself in your notebook. So children we have come to the end of this chapter, chapter 11. So I hope all the concepts we learned in this chapter and also the exercises we did are clear to you. So as a homework, go through all the concepts and exercise once again and you have to do worksheet which is in page number 178 of your textbook. Then once you are done with the worksheet, you can take a picture and send us through teams. So that's all for today children. We'll meet in the next class with a new chapter. Till then, bye.